Hi, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and welcome to the video tutorial for making your cute, super cute snow block using your sewing machine. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to build your sewing machine applique units and then I'll give you a little bit of thread tips and talking about what's written in the pattern and then you'll be ready to sew your block in no time at all. So from your box, what you'll need is your bag of pre-fuse laser cut applique pieces. They come in a cute little bag and I'm gonna show you how I organize them in just a moment. And then you'll take, you have one square that comes in your box along with your flying geese fabrics. Flying geese fabrics you don't need in this video tutorial. You just need the one large square that comes and it's ready to use. You don't have to do anything except give it a little bit of starch and press it and it's ready to go. At the end of this process, after it's sewn, we'll trim it down to a much smaller size so you have more than enough fabric. And if when you starch it, it distorts a little bit or isn't exactly the same size, don't worry about it. You're gonna trim it down, it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna set that fabric aside for now. Now I'm gonna move the camera screen so that you can see what I am looking at in the pattern as we get ready, okay? So in your first box, remember, the beginning of your pattern has a whole bunch of FAQ, information about your notions, all that good stuff. Then you're also gonna to come to your flying geese instructions. You will move past that because remember, you're gonna make the flying geese using that pattern every month. And in this video tutorial, we're gonna go all the way to the back to our snow block one pattern. So in the pattern, you are going to have instructions to of course check what's in your box. Then you're going to, just like I said, start to impress your fabric, go make your flying geese, and then come back, and we're gonna go through the steps. So we're starting on number three, and what you wanna have, doo -doo 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 -doo, let me show you how I organize my pieces. Let me set my pattern up to the side right there. So what I like to do is take my applique pieces, and how I organize them is I take each piece, and you put the fusible, backing side up, because this is the reverse side, right? So you're gonna have your fusible side up and you just put your piece in place and you can number it. It's very easy to identify the pieces. So go through and number all of your pieces. And I like to use my reverse page for that. Then what I do is I read ahead in my pattern and I look at what applique units I'm gonna build. So for example, my first unit is gonna be pieces one through three. Let me move this out of the way. So what I do is I go, my pieces are all numbered, right? And what I do is I make a pile, one, two, three, and I put them in numerical order, and I flip it back over, and I'm ready to grab from my pile. And I do that for each applique unit. So in this month's pattern, we have five applique units. Then we have a little pile of loose pieces that we put on, um, on top of our thing at the end and then we'll put it all together. Now, the first thing we wanna do are mark some accent lines on pieces seven, eight, 13, 22, and 26. Now, what that means, let me get to our placement guide. I'm gonna move my fusing mat out of the way because I want a nice solid surface. So what I have in front of me, I have my light pad. I'm gonna turn it on. It has three levels of light. I like it on the highest. On top of my light pad, I have my glass mat. So when I build my applique units, I'm able to iron right on top of my fusing mat, which is on top of my glass mat, and I don't hurt my light pad. Right now, I just need my light pad, so I like to have a glass on top. So let's talk about accent lines. So you can use a Pigma pen, the thinnest Pigma pen they make, or you can use a sew line chalk pencil, or you can even use a mechanical pencil if you wanted to, to mark your lines. Now, the chalk pencil gives you a little bit of a thicker line, I like to use this if I'm marking like lines on a leaf or something like that. When it comes to kind of the smaller lines, like where I'm gonna mark a dot or the little thin lines of a face, for example, or even the words, I like to use a smaller pen. So I like the Pigma pen for this step. So we are marking the accent lines on piece seven. Now remember, for the white pieces, you're always gonna have two because we wanna double line it. But when you're marking your accent lines, you're only gonna mark one of those pieces. And when we build our unit, you're gonna put down the blank piece and then the marked piece, okay? So let's put number seven in place. And all we're marking on this are little dots for where to put the little French knots or the accent dot for the buttons. So I just did two, let me show you up close, two little dots. 
So that's P7, I'm gonna set it aside. Now we'll do the same thing with number eight. We're only gonna mark one of the pieces. And now we're using our placement guide because we're marking on the fabric side, right? So this is right side up, you reverse applicate pieces, you put it wrong side up. So just a little dot to mark each dot. There we go. Now we are going to mark the little face on piece 13. So just put it right in place. And so what we're marking here are his eyes and his little smile. So what you see now, there you go. Now the next piece is piece 22. Again, you have two of them. You're only gonna mark one of them. And so hold that nice and still. Mark your dot, trace your letters. Now when we do our embellishments, we're gonna use a 12 weight filet. So it's a nice thick thread, which gives us good coverage. You can also choose to use, if you don't have that filet thread kit, you can choose to use your 30 weight thread, which is also gonna give you a nice thick coverage over these letters and embellishment lines. There we go. So snow is now marked and put these off to the side. And now we have the final piece we need to mark, piece 26, which is this little guy's face. And this is not a perfect circle. So make sure you spin it and have it fit just right. There we go. He's got a happy face. Take a look. So easy to mark your accent lines. So now we're gonna go on to the next step in the pattern and we are gonna build applique unit one, which is pieces one through three. So like I mentioned before, I have my light pad, my glass mat, I'm gonna have my placement guide, and then on top I am placing my fusing mat. Now if you've never used a fusing mat before, what's great about it is you can iron your applique pieces in little units on your mat and it peels right up and then you can assemble them together and put them on your background fabric. The best reason, or my favorite reason why I build applique units is because if I'm gonna make a mistake, I make it here and not on my fabric where it's harder to fix. It's easier to fix it here. So up first, pieces one, two, and three. So we have the little rear view mirror, the top part of our truck or Jeep, and then our tree. So just simply begin putting your pieces in place. And everything is a nice, perfect fit. What you'll notice the fusing mat is a little bit tacky feeling, so your pieces don't slip and slide, which is very convenient. So get this little guy. And what we're gonna do is iron Get him to lay just right. There we go. And now we're gonna put our tree right in place. So you just wanna make sure you have overlap here, right? And then our tree goes just like so. There we go. So now where I'm gonna iron is just where these two overlap. Make sure my iron, my iron's not on. Oh no, everybody, I'm gonna pause and let my iron heat up. One second, we'll be right back. Okay, now my iron is hot. It helps if I turn the little surge protector on. I had it plugged in, but not all the way on. So where I'm ironing is just where they overlap and only for a few seconds. Now I'm gonna let that cool. We're gonna move on to our next applique unit, which is pieces four through seven. So let me show you what those are. We have four, five, six, seven. So, and what's cool, you can just leave that there, let it kind of, um, what, what do you wanna call it? Cool off, if you will. So now let's check our pieces. We have four, five, six, and then seven. Remember are those two white pieces of our snowman. So let's put number four in place. Now number five, and the backing of this fusible peels right off. The fusible that we're using is Sulky Perfect Applique. And I just absolutely 
love this fusel whip. It is so lightweight. It's incredible. It really is. So now when it comes to piece number seven, remember we have one that has accent lines marked and one that doesn't. The one that is unmarked is what we will put down first. Doo -doo -doo. Peel your backing. Put piece number seven right in place. And let me, there we go. And now put our second piece. I'm gonna tap all of this at one time with my iron. You could have ironed your pieces as you went if you wanted. There we go. So I'm just gonna boop quickly, like so, press my pieces, give it a little touch. It's all fused. Now let's go in our pattern. We're going to the next page. We're on unit three, which is eight through 17. So now we're jumping over and we are going to do eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we're building this whole little guy right here so let's grab his pieces and then i also want to grab from my um double lined pieces as well and so we're going to move where we have space to build him and you you doesn't need to be in any specific place on your fusing mat right just have open space so now we are doing piece number eight so we are going to put the unmarked piece down first and then we'll put the marked piece down. Now I'm going to give this a press so these don't wiggle just real quickly. Boop. Now we'll put number nine and then number 10. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And get that lined up. It's gonna line up nicely at the very bottom. You're gonna have a nice straight line. Give that a press where they overlap. Now we're jumping over to build his right arm, piece number 11. He's so cute. Whoop, let me pull that up some. There we go. And when you do this, you don't have to be crazy exact. Like don't stress yourself out about it. It's gonna be just fine. And now piece number 12, give that a press. Now 13 is this cute little face. So again, we're gonna put the unmarked piece down first. There we go. And the marked piece right on top. Look how cute he is. He almost makes me think of, we're in Florida, kind of makes me like a surfer snowman. His little print on his shirt. I don't know, like a Tommy Bahama shirt. That's what it makes me think of. I don't know if that's the intended look, but it's what I think of because I'm a Florida girl. Cute little nose. And then we have piece number 15, which is the little center part of the hat. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I just kind of pulled my fusible off on that one. There we go, because I was too quick with it. And then number 16, and with these little stripes, you can be fun. You can have them go perfect or do sideways. I'm going a little sideways on that because it's fun. And then we finish with this piece that ties it all together. And now we are going to give these a press. There we go. So now the next unit that we're going to build is unit four, which is pieces 18 through 23. So let's take a look at what that is. That is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I want a little space. So what I'm gonna do is just very gently peel my applique up. And I stuck it to itself. Whoop. There we go, all fixed. So one unit will go off to the side. Then on this one, just gonna gently peel it up. We have our second applique unit. And now, look at this guy, he should be cool enough. Adorable. <laughs> He's cute. And now we have space to build 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So let me just tell you, so piece number 22 is the square inside and piece number 18 and 21 butt up perfectly 
to this square. So it's real easy to line them up and then 23 goes right on top. So let's get number 18 and put it right in place. And then we have our little wheels down here. Now the two wheels look almost exactly alike, but they are a little bit different. So make sure you use your placement guide to get those in the right place. Now we are gonna do our little bumper. There you go, and so it lines up perfectly in the center right here, see? And it overlaps to give you a space to iron. And then we have what's gonna fit right in the center. There we go. And I'm just gonna pull this down because it needs to, they butt right up to each other. And what holds it together is piece 23. Piece 23, man, it's working hard, isn't it? There we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. And now, number 23. And I am gonna go on and give these a little tap. So let's tap where they overlap and then we'll just put piece 23 on. Otherwise, I'll wiggle it. So there we go. And so this piece, you just wanna make sure that of course it's covering that seam where they all come together. There we go, that is piece number, applique unit, excuse me, number four. So now we're gonna build unit five, which is 24 through 27. So I'm gonna let that cool off. And 24 through, two, through 27 is the rest of this little snowman. And the reason we build him in two units is because the bottom half of him tucks under when we put this down. And then this top part goes over the truck. So that's why we built him in two units. All right, so we are gonna do piece 24. And then piece 25. So this little scarf is under his little neck. There we go. And now for piece 26, we put that right on. And then the marked one goes over the unmarked. Oh, oh and I put the bottom circle down, not right. Look, you guys probably saw that and you were like, Brittany. There we go. Because remember this, his little face is not a perfect circle. It's like a funny little snowman oval. And then the final piece <laughs> jumped out of my hand. Piece number 27. There we go. And get him right in place. And now we will tap these. And now this is put together. So cute. Now, if you wanted to, you could go on and put your little buntings on this if you wanted to. I don't recommend it. I like to do it how the pattern says, because to me it just makes more sense. So now you guys, we are ready to put this together on our fabric. You could also put units one through five together on your placement guide, but I'm gonna go on and do it on the fabric. Okay, so now we don't need our fusing mat anymore. So I'm gonna move this away. So we're gonna put our background fabric directly over our placement guide, right? Easy peasy. And you just want to make sure that your fabric is extending past your eight inch guide. And let's start putting our pieces in place. We are going to put unit one. So just line it up. There we go. Now unit two is his little body down here. And if you want to use a little bit of tape and like tape your placement guide or your fabric, you can. I don't, but you certainly can to make your life easy. And now we are going to put unit, that was one, two, this is unit three. And so you can see the way he's cut out, the tree's cut out underneath it. He goes right over it. 
There we go. Looking good. You can see his hand comes off the tree just a bit. And then we have the whole bottom right here. There we go. And now let's put his little head on. You can see this comes down onto the truck, his little scarf. So get him just right. There we go. So now let's give this a press onto our fabric. And then the next step, we'll put all our cute little buntings in place. So let's just start. And you don't want to slide your iron. You want to lift it. So I'm just doing what I call like a preliminary press right now. Because in a moment after we put that bunting on, I'm going to put my steady bunny down and give it one more quick press. Now you don't want to keep pressing and keep pressing and keep pressing because you can ultimately overwork the fusible, but you have to try really hard to do that, I must say. Now to put my bunting in place, I like to look also at my pattern, just to make sure life easy. So I have them numbered as well. So we have 29, 31, 28. Let's put them in order. 34 is down here. Do, 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 do. We have a 30. 32 and 33. So do I have them all? 28, 29, 33, 1, 33, 3, 3. I do. All righty. So now we are going to start. Now it's a little bit hard to see through this blue fabric, but you can just lift a little bit and know. So I'm going to put down like a center piece and I'm kind of going to work from the center out, I must say. And then I'm going to go over here and do a left piece. I'm kind of on this going to do my own thing of like filling in to make sure I have it space nice. And what happens is these don't overlap. They come right up next to each other. So if you need to make any little adjustments, you can. There we go. And now number 30. There we go, looking cute. Now we have 32. And you can see, take a look at the picture. So the bunting goes off the truck over here on the left, but it doesn't even go all the way to the end, right? It stops before the scarf on the right. So do pay attention to that. If you're like, wait, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. Yes, you are, don't worry. You're gonna go to the scarf. Your little thing is just right. Oh, number 33. and 34 and I think I have them a little squished right here so I'm gonna adapt just a little bit because remember I'm not really looking at my placement guide I'm just placing these a tip if you wanted to be a little more accurate with your placement guide would be to just kind of lift this fabric up and where the point of each little one was you could do a little mark with your sewing chart pencil and that would give you a nice guideline to make sure you had this just right but to me, I was able to wing it without really using my placement guide. Just fine, right? Doesn't that look super cute? So all in one fell swoop, boop. There we go, that is ironed on. So the next thing we're gonna do before we sew, we wanna mark our accent lines that are on our fabric. So you can use either your Pigma pen or your sew line chalk pencil. And those lines that we're marking are simply the little bunting lines. And that line is on the fabric. That's why we didn't mark it sooner. So make sure that you haven't wiggled this. I like to look at my tires, make sure my tires are in place. And I am just gonna mark this line all the way there. And then we have a little line coming out right there. Let's take a look. I'm going to turn the light pad off so you can see it a little better. This is what your project looks like. Let me get my pattern organized because we're going to talk about stitching in just a second. So before I begin stitching, what I like to do is take my Steady Betty and I'm going to put it right in front of me. And now I'm going to do one final good press just to make sure everything is nice and pressed on. See, I don't iron for very long. 
and it sticks. So now when we're doing our sewing, we are going to, behind our applique on our sewing machine, put this Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. It's really nice and lightweight. It tears away easily. And you don't need a giant piece. You just need enough to fit behind your applique. That's it. So just cut yourself a little chunk and that's all you need. So now let's talk about the stitching. I'm gonna move this aside and pull out one. Ta-da! That's already stitched. So now let's talk about how you will do everything. So first off, let's talk about the thread we use. So we did all of the applique being stitched into place with a 30 weight sulky thread in our needle. And look, I forgot to stitch one thing. <laughs> you stitched that, don't ignore me, or I didn't stitch the top of my truck. I'll go back and do that. So in any case, you do a 30 weight thread in your needle and you do a matching 50 weight thread in your bobbin and you use that 9014 sewing machine needle, the universal um, needle. Then for the embellishment lines, so the little buttons, the faces, and then this little red line, and the word snow and the two little dots here, we use a 12 weight filet thread. You can see it gives it a lot more dimension. If you do not want to use that filet thread, you can use your 30 weight thread in your needle and 50 weight matching thread in your bobbin and stitch your accent lines. And I promise it's gonna be just as cute. I really like the 12 weight filet though. It's a really fun thread to work with and I just hope you enjoy using it. So again, we have a tip in step 12 of what needle, what thread, etc. Now let's talk about our stitch order and I'll give you some stitch tips. So when stitching applique, we always start from the very lowest number, so the base piece, and work our way up. However, once you have a thread on your machine, you don't wanna switch for every single piece. So for example, piece one is the silver gray and so is the bumper. So when you have that on your machine, go on and stitch this too, even though the theory is to work your way from bottom to top. We basically just start at the beginning numerically and stitch all the pieces in numerical order as they appear. So for example, the stitch order that we're gonna stitch first, like I mentioned, is gonna be that silver gray for one and 21. Then we're gonna switch that deep Nassau blue, that's such a beautiful blue color. And we are gonna do two, 16, 17, and 18. I think it's two, 16, 17, 18. You have your number placement guide. And then black is our two tires and then around the license plate. Avocado is your tree and then two of your buntings. Your pale yellow is only your scarf pieces, these three pieces. Then you have dark brown, four hands, pretty, pretty easy to see that. Now with white, we are gonna stitch three pieces of the snowman. You do not have to stitch around the white here or here because if you notice, all of the raw edges are underneath other applique pieces, so there's nothing to stitch on those two pieces. Then we have pumpkin pie, the orange, so you have the two noses, of course, and then one piece of bunting. Then your turquoise, you do the two pieces of his jacket, the center part of his hat, and two buntings. Then that butterfly gold is what's used on the bunting here that's different than this yellow. And then last but not least, for the regular applique stitching, we have true red for this last piece of bunting. Then for the embellishment, we're gonna switch to the fillet. Again, when you do the fillet on your sewing machine, if you're not gonna do it by hand, you wanna so, like slow your sewing machine down pretty slow, not all the way to the soles, but pretty, pretty darn slow. You can also use an embroidery needle with this thread and hand stitch this if you wanted to. You can guide your machine real slowly around this or do it by hand. If you do it by hand, these little dots do little French knots. Cute, cute, cute. So the colors that we use there, we have pale turquoise, and that's a filet thread, and that's the three accent dots, little buttons on the snowman, and of course the word snow. Then light red is what they call this um, filet color, and that is for the little bunting accent, and then the little buttons on this snowman. And last but not least, you have the faces, and you'll wanna use charcoal gray. Now on my sample here, I used a black filet, what we use in the pattern, let me show you, choo, 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 is the lighter charcoal gray. It almost has like a little bit of a brown tone to it instead of black. I know it's a little bit hard to tell in the pattern cover, but it is a nice softer look, I think, than the black, but the choice is yours. Of course, all of the threads that we put in here are recommendations based on what we put on the sample. 
If you wanna do everything in one color stitching, you certainly can. You can do whatever you want with the colors. I want you to have fun. So I think that that, oh, that doesn't tell you everything. I wanted to talk a little bit about stitch length and width. So the bite end of your applique stitch doesn't have to be the same on every single piece. Let me show you. So on the main pieces we do on our sewing machine, a two and a half for the bite in. So two and a half by two and a half is our stitch length typically. Now, when it comes to something like a smaller piece that's like a lot thinner, look at his little arms, we take that bite in down to be much smaller. I leave the width between the stitches the same typically, but then if I did a two and a half there, what's gonna happen is my stitches are gonna go bloop, and you don't want that. So you take it down a lot smaller. So you can see here, I did a really good job of like spacing my stitches where they alternated on either side. And I took it down here to, I think I wanna say like a 1.6, 1.8, something much smaller than that two and a half. And then on the buntings, I use the same two and a half. So really just the arms. And then around this piece right here of the license plate, I took it down to a smaller stitch. One other area based on where you position your bunting, I did two and a half to about here. And then I took mine down to about a one and a half all the way because I didn't want the stitching holding down my truck to hit on my bunting. So you can, within even one line, you can stop and take down your bite in and keep going. So don't be afraid to use different stitch sizes on one block. I think a lot of times people feel like they need to pick one size and do everything with it. No, not at all. You wanna make it look good. So have fun with it, play with your stitches. So at the end of this month, you will have your block one applique done. After this, you'll tear away all your stabilizer and you're going to um, trim it down to eight inches, use a nice ruler. Um, I really like, there's this long ruler I like to use and then I like using an eight inch square ruler or I have one that's eight and a half inches so I have like a little wiggle room around it to line it up. And you'll just trim it and hold it in a safe place with those other flying geese that you made this month. So remember for months one through 12, you're gonna make six flying geese, three sets of two flying geese that equals six and then one applique block for months one through 12. So next up after you finish all this, you're gonna store it safely and eagerly await block two, which is a super cute block dedicated to Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for being a member of the Loads of Fun Block of the Month. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We are always here to help and answer your questions. Happy stitching!